Hello Year 3, it's Miss Cartwright here. Welcome to today's IT lesson. Let's get going then. In this lesson, we will learn how to understand different forms of communication and to identify how to communicate safely online. Here are some words and phrases I will hear and use today then in this lesson. So I'm going to point to a word with my laser. I want you to say it first and then I will say it. Talk. Polite. Blog. Chat. Online, email, respect, manners, online, staying safe. Communication, that's a long one, isn't it? Those are the words then that we're going to use. Right, let's have a look at communication first then. So your task, Charlie Communication has set you a task. Write down all the ways in which people can communicate. What does communicate mean? It's ways in which we talk to one another, isn't it? So I am going to give you two minutes to write down all the ways in which we can communicate. So pause the video now, you've got two minutes, go. Right, now you have done that, let's see how many you have got. Have you got any of these? You can pause the video and tick them off, let's see how many you've got. Right, facial expression, so that's not talking is it actually, that is you can signal how you're feeling to one another by using your face. You can use text message. You can write a note, a handwritten note. You can talk, make a phone call, your body language, sign language, messaging, online, email, Skype, blog, all these ways in which we communicate with one another. Communication. It's being able to talk and communicate with people in different ways has become an impo important part of life. The internet has opened up lots of new ways in which we can communicate. We can communicate instantly with anyone on our planet. Who do we communicate with online then? Who might we talk to? Have a think. So we might communicate with anyone who can see and read our profile online. People who send information to directly. Friends and family. People who we play online games with. Why do people communicate online? Why do we talk to one another online? Well, we learn new things. To share information. To talk to people to play games with and compete against others. Let's communicate online then. Can you explain what each of these communication methods are? You can write it down or talk to someone if you have got someone there with you. So, what's a text message? What's an email? And what's a blog? Have a pause and have a think now. Let's have a look at what they are then. So a text message, it's an electronic communication sent and received by a mobile phone. Why might you want to use a text message? Have a think about that. Email, an email is like sending a letter over the internet and it is received straight away. Why might you want to use an email? 
instead of writing, calling or texting. Have a think about that one. And then finally, a blog. A regularly updated website or web page which gives information or stories. Anyone can access or read a blog. Why might you want to write a blog? Have a think about that one. For today's task, you are going to need this sheet which is in your home learning pack. So if you want to pause the video now whilst you find this sheet, that would be great. Thank you. Right then, now you have got your sheet, let's have a look at what your task is. Let's communicate online then. First of all, by text message. Let's use our initiative to practice communicating online. Imagine that you want to communicate with a member of your family. Write an example text message to a member of your family. Think about the language you would use when speaking to a member of your family. So on your sheet, on the phone, write your text message now. You can pause the video. Let's communicate online then, using email this time. Let's use our initiative to practice communicating online. Imagine that you want to communicate with a friend in another class. Mm. Write out an email message to your chosen friend. Let's have a look at what an email looks like. If you haven't got your sheet, don't worry. You can use the online sheet on your portfolio to do this task, okay? So, first of all, we've got two. What goes in this bar that says two? It's your friend's email address, isn't it? So it's not just your friend's name. You need to know their email address because they will get that email directly to them through their email address. So your email address, their email address, ends with at something. So it could be at hotmail.com or at gmail.com. Okay, that is what an email address ends with. What's this CC pot? This just means to copy someone into the email. So you might want to send it to another person as well. So you can copy them in the email. And you would also add their email address in there. We've then got the subject. So you're sending an email, but you need to tell your friend what the email is about. Very important. So you write the subject of the email in there. Is it about school? Is it about math? Is it about your pets? What is the email about? Then we are going to look at the main body of the email in here. So you can write your greeting at the top. So how are you going to greet your friend? You're going to say hi, hello, good morning. How are you going to greet them? Okay. Then you're going to write your message underneath. And then finally, you're going to sign off your email. So you're going to say bye, love from, love, best wishes, take care. How are you going to sign off? Your email and then you need to write your name, okay? And then when you have done that, you can press send. You can imagine press and send and that email would be sent to them. Can you think of any dangers you may face when communicating online with people? You could get bullied end up talking to strangers. Internet communication can be permanent and last forever. Easy to misinterpret what someone means. What does that mean, misinterpret? Well, you might send an email and you might think it's quite nice what you've put, but someone else might think it comes across a little bit mean or nasty. So they might misinterpret what you mean. You can't explain it face to face. So they're easily misinterpreted emails or online communication. Someone may ask to meet you. People may lie about who they are. Someone may post something nasty about you. Right, here are some examples of good manners. So in real life, saying please and thank you is a must. Waiting your turn. Standing up for older people when on public transport, holding your hands over your mouth when coughing or sneezing, saying excuse me when walking in between people or accidentally bumping into someone. These are good manners. 
What are good manners when communicating online then? Do not use uppercase letters. You can come across quite angry. Use nice words and images. Use emoticons to help explain your feelings, so emojis. Do not write nasty and hurtful things about others. Make sure your messages are positive. Here are some top tips then for when you are communicating online. Never send someone my picture or anything else without first checking with my parent or guardians. Do not respond to any messages that are mean or make you feel uncomfortable, very important. Don't talk to someone you don't know online. Don't arrange to meet anyone you met online. Print out any nasty messages or pictures as evidence and report it, it to a trusted adult. Talk to your parents or guardians so that you can set up rules for when you go online. And if you are unsure of anything at all, always ask for help. And these letters over here, this is very important. I want you to always, always remember this. The information we share online it stays with us forever. It creates almost like a trail of information about us. So we need to be very careful about what we post online because that is going to be on there forever. Okay.